Polarity reversal happens in the converted wave images. This will cause destructive interference when we stack the images over experiments. Here is an example. This is a stacked PS image uh, computed using the true Marmousi velocity models. Uh, so in this image, we see that most of the reflectors are not well imaged. This is caused by the polarity change in individual uh, PS uh, images from every experiment. There have been a lot of research, research, uh, uh, research focusing on the uh, polarity reversal correction. One of the simplest and the computationally efficient ways is to uh, flip the sign of individual Im image from, e from each experiment at, uh, at uh, negative source and receiver offset in the image domain. And after stacked images, we can get a, well, a much better image where we can see most of the reflections. However, in the areas highlighted by the yellow box, we can see that in the area with complex geology structures, the image is not, uh, still well not focused. And last year in the consortium meeting, we proposed an uh, imaging condition uh, to correct for the polarity reversal. Using that imaging condition, we are able to get uh, this image shown here. And in, even in the area with complex geology structures, we're able to get uh, well-focused images. During the presentation, I will refer to the, the imaging condition that cross-correlating the source and the receiver wave field as a conventional imaging condition, and our new imaging condition as a scalar imaging condition. Today, we will continue the discussion uh, to talk about uh, some practical issues associated, associated with, with this imaging condition. And before that, I would like to, uh, to remind you of this imaging condition. Here are the equations for uh, the PS and SP images and that we derived. In this imaging condition, uh, the top one is for the PS image and the bottom one is for the SP image. In the imaging condition, we, in, we rely on a variable which is the reflector normal. And this, we assume, uh, is the prior information that we can obtain prior, before we start doing uh, this, this migration. And this in this imaging condition, uh, it contains uh, the P and S waves decomposed the, from the displacement wave field. And the P and S in the, in the square brackets are the source wave field, and out of the brackets, they are receiver wave fields. We, uh, for the iso elastic isotropic case, we uh, apply the Helmholtz decomposition to obtain the decomposed the P and S wave fields. Here, notice that uh, the P is computed through the divergence of the displacement wave field, while S is a curl. And so the P is a scalar, while S is a vector. The direction of S is orthogonal to the, the wave, wave motion plane of the SB wave, as S wave. So in this, in this imaging condition, we notice that P is a scalar, N is a vector. S is also a vector. Therefore, uh, the image, the PS and SP images are both scalars if, uh, for both 2D and 3D cases. The sum over E and T means we do summation over experiment and time. Okay, so for the physical, ex uh, for understanding this, uh, this equation, I will take the first equation as an example, explain the physical meaning behind it. <coughs> Uh, I will introduce a cartoon for illustration. The cartoon contains a horizontal interface, uh, which is a local interface plane. And the vector n is a normal vector orthogonal to the interface plane. This is the blue. Uh, the blue arrow shows the propagation direction of the incident P wave. The gradient of P uh, is parallel to its propagation direction. And in this cartoon, we only show one possibility where the uh, gradient of P is in the same direction of its propagation direction. So the blue arrow and the vector N will define a vertical plane in yellow shown here. This is a reflection plane. So also the reflected S V wave will also propagate within the reflection plane. And I, as we mentioned before, 
The vector s is computed using Helmholtz decomposition, and its direction is orthogonal to the reflection point. Now let's look at this equation. In the equation, first we compute the gradient of p, which is uh, which is the uh, which is indicated by the green arrow shown here. And next we compute the cross product of the green arrow and the vector n, which gives us a vector orthogonal to the reflection point. Notice that both the green arrow and the vector s are orthogonal to the reflection point, so they are parallel to each other. In the next step, we do the a dot product between the two vectors, and therefore we can obtain a scalar image at the reflection point. So back to this image, we got a lot of discussion and comments from, uh, from the presentation last year, and uh, one of the most uh, most big question we got was how do we estimate reflection normal? Because here we assume we already know this information, but in practical, this information is very uh, is not easy to obtain. Here we pro we provide our solution, which is we estimate the reflection normal from some uh, from pr prior images, using those images computed using conventional imaging condition. So this, they can be PP image, PS image, SP image, and SS images. Um, and so for this, um, and we use this to estimate reflection, uh, to, to estimate reflect, uh, normal vector n, and use this n to compute the scalar image. So in summary, uh, we need to do, generally we need to do a migration twice. The first time is to compute the, the vector n. And in practical, uh, this n, uh, the, the accuracy of estimation for n relies on the estimation of the image we got from the conventional imaging condition. And if we want to compute the scalar PS image, and we want to estimate, estimate the n that associates, that gives us the right direction for the reflectors that would appear in the, in the scalar images. But however, in reality, uh, we could not get estimates the velocity models correctly, so the image we obtained in PP, PS, SP, and SS, SS images may be wrong locations. And even use even even we will, when we want to use the wrong velocities, um, the PP, PS, and SP, SS images may be inconsistent with each other. Here is an example. Uh, this is a simple uh, 2D example. It contains one dipping reflector, and the acquisition geometry contains one source, indicated by the white dot, and a line of receivers, which is the yellow line shown here. And first, we use the conventional imaging condition to compute the PP image, as well as the PS image. And then we can use, uh, we can test uh, the, uh, we can test the reflector normal estimated from both of the images to see how we can how their uh, how this uh, estimated reflector normal would reflect on a, on the scalar PS image. So for the PP image, by comparing the PP image and the PS image, we notice that uh, we are using a round velocity for both P and S velocity models, so they are location at at, at inconsistent locations. So for the PP image, we compute the reflector normal. I'm showing here the figure is a tangent of the dipping angle for the reflect for the normal vector n, and it's consistent with the PP image. And for the PS image, we can compute the same fig oh, and so we we'll use a PP image to compute uh, uh, the the reflector normal reflected, uh, estimated from the PP image to compute the scalar PS image. In this PS image, we observe that from left to right, the, the image is, um, most, of, most parts is, has consistent polarities, except for the area in the center. This is because from the, uh, from the reflector normal we estimated from the PP is not consistent with the PS image we compute here. Instead, if we estimate the reflector normal from the conventional PS image, 
and we obtain this tangent of the dipping angle of the of the, the dipping angle of the normal vector shown here. And then we compute a corresponding scale, uh, scalar PS image. And in this image, we notice that from left to right, we are able to obtain a PS image which has more consistent polarities. And now we are trying to apply this to a more complicated example. In this example, contains uh, multi receivers, uh, which are in the multi, multi sources, and which are indicated by the white dots showing on the top, and a line of receivers also on the on the top. And in the model, contains a thick water layer above. And for this uh, for this migration. Uh, in complicated geology structures, and especially in practical issues, we will have a noise in the image. Uh, we cannot trust we cannot trust the, the reflector normal estimated from single experiments. So we need to compute the stacked PP and PS images to estimate reflector normal and apply that to the scalar uh, scalar imaging. So for, from now on, I will only show the image below the water bottom. Here is a PP image we compute using the conventional imaging condition. Again, here we use round velocity uh, for migration. And we see that there are a lot of energy a smile, uh, or smiles in the image, which means uh, the, and the refractors are not focused. And, we, and this is a PP image, also again use round velocities. By comparing the PP image, and a PS image, we notice that uh, these are images are both not well focused because we are using the round velocities for P and S, and um, the the reflectors are are imaged at wrong at different locations, especially in the area with the faults. So we use the PP image to estimate reflection normal, and then use it to compute the PS image, which is shown here. In the image, we can see that um, in the area with the uh, in the area with the faults, uh, the the image is not very uh, focused. And this is a PS image computed using the refractor normal estimated from the conventional PS image. So from PP, from PS. We notice that in this area highlighted by the yellow arrow, uh, we uh, the two uh, two estimation both does a good job. Uh, because in this area, the geology structure is very simple, and almost all the reflectors are horizontal from top to bottom. Uh, so therefore, we can use both PP and PS images in simple uh, geology in, in models with simple geology structures. However, in the areas highlighted by the right by the red arrow, the PS image estimated uh, computed using the refractor normal estimated from the PB conventional imaging condition was not very focused, and we observed a lot of polarity, polarity reversals in the stacked image. For the second question, uh, that was also associated associated with a question that we received from uh, last year. Which was what happened? What's the performance of this imaging condition if um, there are waves illuminating the same reflector, maybe a dipping reflector from both sides? Now uh, we will visualize this with uh, two very simple examples. In the two models, in left and right, they have the same mo same material properties. They consist in two layers, and the normal the 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 arrow. Uh, and the, the white arrow is showing the reflector normal we use to compute uh, the, 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 the scalar image. The difference between the two exam experiments is that in the, in the left one, we have the, geo uh, the acquisition geometry on top, and in the right, we have the geometry acquisition in the bottom. So in this, we are able to illuminate the same reflector from opposite sides. And now we are going to show four uh, experiments in a row and trying to connect these two experiments to see whether we can get the image from these two experiments that have the same polarity. First, we look at the image computed using this uh, setup, which is showing on the right. This is a PS image. And from left to right, there is no polarity change. means our, um, our uh, scalar imaging condition is doing a good job. 
And next, we're going to flip the material properties of the top layer and bottom layer and keep the acquisition geometry and the vector n uh, consistent with this one. So we flipped the two layers. And now, uh, because we flip the two layers and the reflectivity uh, coefficients will change the sign, therefore we will be able to get a PS image with uh, opposite polarity from the former one. And in the third experiment, we're going to uh, flip the model upside down, uh, everything upside down, so like this which is equivalent to that we change, simply change the direction of the z-axis and keep the rest of things consistent with the form experiment. So now since we are not really changing anything to the experiment, uh, we are getting the PS image which has a consistent polarity with the second experiment. Now in the fourth, which is the last experiment, we will do one more change, which is we change the direction of the reflector normal. Instead of making it pointing down, we make it point upward. This is like in the, in, in the imaging condition, we're introducing a negative sign uh, to our image. We are expecting to get, uh, to change the polarity again of the PS image. So by comparison of the two experiments, where uh, we have the same model but different acquisition and we're illuminating the reflector from opposite sides but we are able to get images with consistent polarities. Let's look at a more complicated model. This is a cross well example and the white dots on the left are showing the location of the sources and the yellow line on the right showing the location of the receivers. So first, we compute the conventional PS image. In this image, we see that the reflectors on top and bottom are well imaged because they are basically uh, illuminated only by waves from one side. And we, if we take a look at a common image gather on the right, uh, which is taken from the location indicated by the white line, we can see that uh, in the areas highlighted by the yellow box from the left to right, the images in different experiments have inconsistent polarities. So if we stack the images over experiments, uh, we get the image in the left panel indicated by the yellow arrow where the, uh, the energy of the reflector is weak. For comparison, we apply the scalar imaging condition and therefore we can get this scalar PS image where the reflector in the middle is better imaged. So scalar PS, conventional PS, scalar PS. And in the same way, we, can, we, draw, we, we take a look at this common image gallery, which is shown on the right. And we see that in the area highlighted by the yellow box, from left to right, all the images have consistent polarities. So if we stack them together, we won't have the problem of uh, cancellation. Through my presentation today, we are trying to solve two practical issues associating with this imaging condition. The first one is to how to estimate the reflector normals. So we can estimate reflector normals from uh, prior imaging conditions, uh, the images computed using conventional imaging conditions, for example, PP, PS, SP, and SS. In the situation where we have complicated geology structures and round velocities, um, we will get better correction if we use the PB image to estimate reflector normal and use it to compute the corresponding scalar PS image uh, than using the PB image to estimate reflector normals. And for the second question, um, our imaging condition can handle can handle the situation where uh, the one reflector is illuminated from by waves from opposite sides, and even with uh, with those waves from opposite sides, we're still able to get images with consistent polarities. Thank you for your attention. I would like to take your questions. Thank you.